probably the most annoying thing you're gonna face in chess is your opponents trying to defeat you within just a couple moves using a sneaky attack called an early queen attack. And there are a lot of those tricksters. And our goal for today will be to go over a couple popular attempts of them to defeat you that way, as well as seeing ways for you to punish them for daring to play this unsound attack against you. So we're gonna be merciless, and if you're okay with that, let's go ahead and get started. Here's one of those common ways where black can try this early queen attack against you. So after you play pawn e4, pawn e5 and knight to f3, they play bishop to c5, kind of baiting you to capture this pawn on e5, and it is actually correct for white to do so, but as you win the pawn, they continue with the move queen to h4, threatening this very simple primitive known attack called the scholars checkmate. They're gonna defeat you after queen takes f2. And here's the trick, a lot of players play the move pawn to g3 to block out the queen. And although that works with the reversed colors when you're playing black, when you're playing white, this is a critical error because in this position they're grabbing this pawn e4 with a double attack of the king and the rook. They're gonna gobble up the rook on the next move and win the game. That's what they're hoping for. Now let's take it back and let's see what are the better options for white. Now of course you can defend your f2 pawn with multiple different ways. But again, our idea is not just to defend, but to completely ruin black's position. And for that reason we're gonna attack, we don't want even to defend. So we play the move pawn to d4, attacking the bishop, and we are ready to sacrifice this pawn on e4, because we don't want to defend, we want to, to develop quickly, and then to rush into our own attack. So after black captures this pawn on e4, check to your king, you play bishop e3, covering your king. And now this bishop on c5 is still hanging, they're usually moving it back. And what's the beauty of this position is that now you start developing your pieces with a tempo and you gain more and more tempos by attacking this queen. And the queen is just dancing around while you keep developing pieces and keep attacking. So on the next move after a queen goes to f5 or anywhere else basically, you play bishop c4, bring out your final minor piece into the attack. And now black has no sufficient defense against this attack against their f7 pawn. So you can capture it with a bishop on the next move and attack their king, or you can capture it with your knight and then grab the rook in the corner of the board. Either way, you're gonna win. They usually play knight of h6, and that certainly doesn't help, because first of all, you can just trade it off, but secondly, which is even more brutal, is playing pawn to g4. This attacks the queen here on f5, and notice that your pawn is defended, therefore black cannot just take it. The only square for the queen to go to is queen to f6, and after that you keep pushing pawn to g5, this time with a double attack of the queen and the knight. Queen f5 is forced, and now you gobble up the knight, then you grab the pawn on f7, and you completely destroy black. So that's how you refute this unsound attack within a couple moves, and again, without knowing that, you could easily go down. But now we turn the situation around, and you punish black for this unsound attack. Here's another extremely popular trick for black. Here after you play standard moves knight of 3, knight c6 and bishop to c4, instead of playing any normal developing move, your opponent may play knight to d4, once again baiting you to capture this pawn on e5. And in this position, it is actually bad for white to do so, although it's not completely losing, but that puts you at a great risk, because knight to takes e5 exposes you to this early queen attack queen to g5, and in this case, it is indeed quite effective for black. The thing is, it attacks the knight as well as this pawn on g2, and if you play the move knight takes f7, which looks winning for white at first, black counterattacks with queen takes g2, attacking your rook here on h1, and you can see that you start getting in trouble. For example, if you play rook to f1, which a lot of players do, black follows up with queen takes e4, check to your king, and this leads to this really nasty checkmate with knight to f3. Now, of course, you don't want to go into that line, so let's find a better variation for you. Instead of capturing this pawn on e5, I recommend that you trade off this knight on d4, and after that you simply castle. And, again, of course, for now we can say that you're already safe, but our goal is much more ambitious. We want to defeat black, hopefully, within a couple moves. So that's our sweet revenge. How can you do that? Well, let's take a look at a couple popular options of black here. They usually refrain from developing their knight to f6, because in this case you can push your pawn forward to e5, drive this knight away, and that feels unpleasant for black. What else can they do besides developing their knight? Very often they decide to develop their bishop instead and they play bishop to c5, hoping to play pawn d6 on the next move and solidify their position. But in this case, here's a little nice combo that helps you to win. It's a move bishop takes f7, and with this little boom, you actually completely ruin black's position. King takes f7 is forced, now queen to h5 check, comes with a double attack to the king and bishop, thus on the next move you're gonna grab the bishop, probably this pawn on d4 as well, black's king is exposed, it can't castle anymore, and you're getting a completely winning game. 
The final try of black besides bishop c5 is playing a, a bit passive move pawn to d6. What can you do next? Well, normally in an opening you'd wish to develop your own knight to c3, but currently you can't do that because it's controlled by black's pawn. So you just play pawn to c3 first, offering this exchange, which is good for you for different reasons. One of them is you, you're going to grab the center after that, and secondly, you simply develop your knight with a tempo after this exchange. And then after black goes knight to f6, there's one more thing I want to highlight here. Instead of just playing the move pawn to d4, which everyone plays here, here, just to have a nice center, you can play more aggressively by playing queen to b3. And this simple threat is actually quite annoying for black. In a usual situation, they'd wish to castle and defend their pawn that way with their rook from f8. But currently, since they're underdeveloped, they cannot do that. So they have to play some awkward moves such as queen to e7 just to defend this pawn on f7. And yes, they defended it, but now their position is awkward, they cannot develop normally and you have great chances to start your crushing attack within a couple moves. You just play pawn to d4, and then on the next move, let's say they try to develop this way, you just play bishop g5, you threaten knight d5, you threaten pawn e5, and that is completely winning. For example, bishop g7, you can already break through with the move pawn e5, you're pinning the knight so it can go away, and if black tries to trade here in the center and grab the pawn, then you play rook e1, this time pinning the queen and winning it on the next move. So that's how you refute black's idea in this case. And here's the final variation where black may try an early queen attack against you, and it's actually extremely tricky. Here's the thing, when they play knight of 6, and if you play this uh, fried liver attack with the move knight to g5, which is a fine opening variation, generally speaking, there is a very tricky counter blow knight takes e4. It is so tricky that, in fact, I even have a video where I explain how you can use this as black and win games because it's extremely difficult for white to find the right way, but I'm going to share it with you today. So what's the trick here? But first it looks like just a blunder, like black gives up a knight for no reason, but of course it's a lot trickier than that. If you just grab the knight over here, then black comes with a move pawn to d5, they regain a piece with a good position. So that's perfectly fine for black, and that's not what you should be doing. Most of the players in this position capture this knight on f7 thinking that they're winning the game because of this fork to the queen and the rook, but that's what black is hoping for, because here comes that early queen attack, queen h4, threatening this pawn on f2 with something like the scholar's checkmate, and in the following lines, black has a really strong attack. Again, I've got a video about that. If you're curious to play this as black, you can check this out later. But you do not want to go here, okay? That is very dangerous. Instead, the correct way for white is actually going after black's king. So they try to attack your king, but you say, hey, I don't want that. I want to attack you myself. So you play bishop takes f7, check to the king. Now the king has to go. And now thanks to Stockfish, we do know the right move, but still the follow-up is fairly complicated. So let me share it with you. So the correct move for white here is the move pawn to d4. What's the, what's the purpose? Well, clearly black has this centralized king in the middle of the board exposed to your attack. And you just want to open up some central files and start attacking black's king. So that's the main purpose of the move pawn to d4. Also, notice that in all of these variations, you don't have to worry about black capturing your knight over here. In fact, it is just a losing error for black. If they ever do so, bishop takes g5, counts with this cure, and you win the queen on the next move. So we don't worry about that. We welcome black to capture your pawn. All right, let's take it back. Let's see what else can black play here instead of knight takes g5. The usual way of black is taking knight takes d4, because they're going to need to deal with your pawn attack anyway somehow. Now we play pawn to c3, trading this knight away. It goes back to c6, and now we've opened up this d-file, which gives us more attacking options, and we're going to follow up with the move bishop to d5. So that hits a couple targets. First of all, it attacks this knight on e4, that's the most obvious threat. The other one is knight to f7 with a fork to the queen and rook. That's the other threat which black should worry about. The only way for black to try to save their position is playing knight to d6, which both saves this knight as well as covers the f7 square so that your knight cannot jump there. But you outsmart black with a brilliant move. Instead of jumping with your knight over there, you actually play knight to e6, which is a really, really beautiful combo. We hit the queen and we're willing to sacrifice our knight over here because we follow up with the move bishop to g5. That was the point of sacrificing your knight. You just wanted to vacate the square for this skewer attack where it allows you to win opponent's queen and then you keep attacking black's king anyway. So this is the beautiful variation that to some extent refutes this unsound attack of black. Today we've talked about black trying different kinds of scholars checkmate early queen attacks against you, but of course white can try that as well. And in this case I recommend you watching out this video which already got over a million views where I cover ways for you to defend effectively as black. And of course if you want to level up your chess overall, feel free to attend my free masterclass by clicking the link over there in the corner. Have a great rest of the day and I'll talk to you soon.